In mid-July of 2021, professional football player tore his Achilles tendon. With such a catastrophic injury, he was expected to be out the entire season. But he returned to playing just five months later. Perhaps even more crazy, in 2020, a gymnastics athlete ruptured his Achilles tendon, but just three months later, competed in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and helped his team win gold. Terrible injuries like these typically put normal people out 9 to 12 months, and that's just before they'll start feeling normal again. But these athletes, after 5, after 3 months, were already back to performing at a high level. Okay, but real quick, I want to make it clear, I am not claiming that any of these athletes used any of the substances I am going to talk about. This is all just speculation circulating on the internet. But also, I do want to make it clear that I don't think that any of these athletes did anything that they weren't supposed to do. That is because even if they did use the substance I am about to talk about, it wasn't until later January 1st, 2022, when BPC-157 was added to WADA's prohibited list in the category of S0 unapproved substances. WADA doesn't know how to have any fun. Now, however, in the underground realm of experimental substances, the Wolverine stack refers to a combination of two peptides, one I already mentioned, BPC-157, and the other, TB-500 claimed to be known for their potential to accelerate healing and recovery, similar to the superhuman abilities of the X-Men character, Wolverine. BPC-157, short for Body Protection Compound 157, is derived from a protein naturally found in gastric juices. It is thought to enhance fibroblast activity crucial for the formation of new tissue. It is also thought to stimulate collagen synthesis, promote angiogenesis, or the formation of new blood vessels, thus improving blood flow, helping deliver nutrients to the damaged areas. Now, TB500 is a synthetic derivative of thymosin beta-4. Thymosin beta-4 is a naturally occurring protein found in virtually all human and animal cells and plays a key role in various processes related to tissue repair, regeneration, and inflammation control. While TB500 is not the exact same molecule as TB4, it is thought to work similarly regarding tissue repair. Wait, so hold up a minute. Naturally found in? Naturally occurring? So using these would still be considered natty, right? Well, I asked you guys this, and over half of you said, not natty. <laughs> and I even included a category that says natty, but only if used to treat injuries. And still, over half of you said not natty. So why is this so controversial? Well, there's this huge gray area. For instance, BPC-157 is currently not an approved drug, but it has also been deemed not for human consumption by the FDA. This also supposedly makes it not available as a dietary supplement. And the FDA says this due to safety concerns and a lack of clinical trial data, blah, blah, blah. FDA is no fun either. However, it can be available, but only for research purposes and for laboratory use. So I guess they just expect this to be used in rat studies and supervised human clinical trials. But based on what I've come across, that hasn't stopped the experimental gym bro from uh, doing their own research. <laughs> but jokes aside, I've got to be honest, I've seen and heard a lot of anecdotal evidence regarding this Wolverine stack and the hypothesis that it accelerates healing and injury recovery. Now I wanna make it clear, I am not suggesting using unapproved substances, it is just what I've heard. However, there has been so much shady activity regarding the availability of these compounds and companies and laboratories and individuals are playing with this gray area, trying to turn a profit. It's the wild west, like, like who knows what. Now, as you guys have probably seen over the past couple of years, I have been battling reoccurring chronic injuries, and it has just been extremely frustrating. But because this entire topic has become such a gray area, unapproved mess, I have actually decided to formulate my own natty Wolverine stack using a combination of approved legal dietary supplements with some special ancient herbs 
that nobody really talks about. And as I've dialed this formula in over the last couple of months, I feel like I'm onto something, onto something that I personally feel like is helping those old chronic injuries heal at a faster rate, not only that making me less sore in my workouts, so a secondary beneficial effect. I feel like I'm onto something cutting edge here and I wanna share this stack with you guys for your interest. First of all though, I just wanna say this is just what's working for me. Also, I consider this what I like to call open source, meaning I might make changes to this at any time going forward and I'm open to any comments, suggestions, or anything you want to say about this in the comment section, as well as making new additions to this stack in the future. And I have some ideas I actually want to share with you when I'm done going through this stack and I'm going to ask your opinion on that. There's some interesting stuff in here. Okay, so cut to the chase, bro. What is the stack? This first ingredient is an herb. An herb I feel like nobody talks about which is crazy because I found it to be what I believe to have very powerful healing benefits, as well as I've actually seen some crazy physical differences when taking this herb. This herb, without further ado, is Cissus quadrangularis, also known in some ancient medicines as Hadjad, and this name, I believe, means something like bone setter, because this herb has been used for centuries because it's believed to help heal bones faster. And now more recently, there has been some literature suggesting it might just do that. Now on top of potentially helping to accelerate bone healing, I've come across some literature and some anecdotes of people who have taken cissus and have claimed that it has helped them accelerate their healing to tendon, ligament, and joint injuries as well. Also, something I've physically noticed when taking this supplement that, in my opinion, is undeniable, is the crazy vascularity I get a couple of hours after taking this. Like I haven't really been typically that vascular of a person until I've taken this and it's like insane, an insane difference. Way more than any pump product I've, I've ever tried. It's, it's crazy. But that has been making me think back to this whole angiogenesis thing, formation of new blood vessels. And maybe similar to how BPC-157 might work with angiogenesis, this is it also doing angiogenesis. I mean, I feel like I'm so much more vascular at the least, maybe it's helping with blood flow. No one talks about it, crazy. Okay, but without further ado, I wanna move on to my second ingredient in this Natty Wolverine stack that I've been adding in recently, and oh my gosh, I am afraid that I'm gonna get so much crap for this one, but just please hear me out a second, please hear me out a second. The second ingredient to the Natty Wolverine stack, <laughs> glutamine. Okay, dude, I know there's this huge consensus that is formed online that's like, Glutamine is completely pointless. You get enough of it in your food. You don't need it. It's a waste of money. But then why do I feel like I am noticing something beneficial? First of all, I just wanna say I do agree that if you're eating regularly, you're probably gonna get enough glutamine in your diet to cover the amount you need for optimal muscle growth, blah, blah, blah. But two things. First of all, I'm someone who occasionally intermittent fasts. Second of all, I'm not necessarily taking this to fill in any void I might have in glutamine, but I'm taking it for the potential growth hormone boosting effect. You see, there is this one study that came out showing a temporary increase in HGH levels by about 78% with the supplementation of glutamine. Now, because growth hormone has been said to help with tendon, ligament, and joint recovery, I figured a natural dietary supplement that could enhance growth hormone production would be perfect for this stack. Now this next supplement, I don't think I've ever talked about before, but there have been a lot of recent studies and anecdotes, people using this to increase muscle protein synthesis, but I also came across some research indicating that it might increase growth hormone and IGF-1. This supplement, trimethylglycine, also known as betaine. So I've been throwing this in the Natty Wolf ring stack primarily because its potential effect on growth hormone, once again, similar to glutamine, increasing it, thus hopefully increasing the speed of healing to the, the joints, ligaments, tendons, etc. But there's also a huge array of potential benefits that have been studied with TMG that I'm hoping are working synergistically to thus also help with the recovery process. Now a quick detail I wanna throw in with TMG. If I'm taking this on a day where I'm eating eggs, then well, I just take the TMG. But if I'm not eating eggs on that day, then I actually do combine about a quarter capsule of this B vitamin supplement 
to give me B12, B6, and folate because these are supposedly essential cofactors for the methylation process that TMG supports. Now, once again, just like some of these other supplements, I think the topic for TMG is way deeper than what I'm just saying here, but ultimately, it's included in my Wolverine stack because of its potential acceleration to the healing process and its potential acceleration to growth hormone production. Okay, before I get to the next supplement, you gotta check this out. There is a method to this madness. Cystus quadrangularis, opening up the blood vessels, potentially helping deliver those nutrients deep to the tissues. Glutamine and TMG, potentially increasing growth hormone IGF-1. So getting those growth factors to those areas that just don't get a lot of blood flow. But now what about the actual nutrients, the building blocks to help repair those old injuries? And that leads me to the final supplement, UC2 or undenatured collagen type two. So why type two collagen? Why undenatured type two collagen? Well, the more research I've been doing, the more I'm finding that this might be the best for potential cartilage repair and regeneration. But with that being said, I am still experimenting here and there with type one, three, and the other types sometimes collagen in my protein shakes, but it is type two that I'm adding to this Wolverine stack because it might be the one that has the best help with the cartilage tendons and joints. And that's where I think my problems are. Let me know your thoughts on that one. So how I'm actually currently taking this stack is, is silly, but I think it's pretty interesting and worth noting. On workout days, I actually mix this all together in a big jug of water and I'm consuming it right after my workout. That's right, I'm taking these pills apart, mix it up and I'll drink it right after my workout. Now, I've also been adding this product called Hydrate in there and that's just for a little bit of taste. It's Transparent Labs electrolyte product. I think they have a pretty darn good flavor profile. It tastes like Gatorade, but doesn't have that artificial crap in there. It's not necessary for the Wolverine stack, like I said, it's just for taste. It's just what I'm doing. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Now on non-workout days, it's a little more sporadic, but I still take a serving of each. Now, like I mentioned earlier, what about some supplements that I'm thinking about adding to this, contemplating about it? Well, I've got a few very interesting ones. This first one you rarely hear about, but it's called deer antler velvet extract. It's supposed to contain like growth factors for growing the deer's antlers. This is sounding more crazy the more I'm saying it out loud, but it's thought to maybe have an impact on healing in the body. <laughs> Maybe that's a terrible idea. Another supplement I've tried before here and there, but I've heard it can have potential growth factor like deep healing properties or effects, and that is colostrum. Let me know your thoughts on that. And then one more I probably should just literally add in, I don't know why I wouldn't just add it in, because I have it, is, why would I not just add this in? I'm probably just gonna add this in. Let's make a fifth ingredient here but it's a uh, glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, and hyaluronic acid. It's just all the like joint lubricating supplements, if that can even be a thing. I, I can't see how this would cause any, I, I should just add this in, I have it. Like, why wouldn't I just add this in? Boom, there you go. Okay, and now one more question you might have is like, why isn't turmeric included in the stack? I thought you said you take turmeric, bro. Well, that's because I actually wouldn't necessarily consider turmeric as a Wolverine stack, like healing supplement. I would consider it more as like an anti-inflammatory supplement. And I do still take turmeric here and there when I feel like I need it, but I take it for its effect and that is reducing inflammation and pain. And the reason I wouldn't include it in this stack and wanna take it every day, and especially not after my workouts, because if you actually do reduce inflammation too much after a workout, you might actually be hindering repair. I don't take it all the time, I take it when needed. But uh, this, is the Natty Wolverine stack and I feel like it's working and I feel like I'm gonna keep taking it for now and keep seeing how things go and maybe add in some stuff if you guys have some suggestions.